So we are live on Facebook and um, beginning our presentation. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm my name is Clementine Bordeaux or Mini Bordeaux, as a lot of folks know me. Um, I'm here on behalf of Racing Magpie and want to welcome everyone to this exciting presentation as a part of our seasonal program called Winter Camp um, with Santana who will be presenting on Watch You Be Life. And we're really privileged to have her with us to share with you all. Um, for those of you that don't know, Racing Mike Pie is a Lakota-centric arts and culture organization founded in 2015 here in Rapid City, uh, Mini Luzaha Otuahe here in South Dakota. Um, and we center the Lakota practice of being a good relative in everything that one does. And our work focuses on elevating and uplifting the ongoing work of community-based artists and culture bearers. And as part of being a good relative, this program uh, reimagines the Lakota winter camp model. And in that, we are looking at how Lakota people problem solve, community build, um, and how we're you know, moving through our everyday life by examining the way Lakota people interact with the world around us. Um, while these events are open to the public, we focus on Lakota people and the broader Ocheti Shakoi community, um, both as presenters and attendees. Um, we want to also thank the Bush Foundation for their generous sponsorship of this program and really encourage our audience to support our work in other ways, whether that's visiting the Racing Magpie website, um, mailing in or dropping off donations, but also, of course, supporting our artists and creatives by searching them out, buying their work, their, uh, downloading their music, um, you know, supporting any of their presence and their um, creative practices. So uh, before we start with our presentation, um, I'll be monitoring both the Zoom chat if you're here with us in the Zoom room, or if you're on watching Facebook Live, I'll be monitoring the comment section. So if you have any questions for Santana, um, I can get those to her. So without further ado, Santana is an Oglala Lakota woman from the Pine Ridge Reservation. She is a first time mother to a beautiful baby boy named Tariq. Um, her mother is the Davidica Little Spotted Horse and her father is Wendell Young Man Afraid of His Horses Jr. Her maternal parents are Jean Belt and David Little Spotted Horse, and her paternal grandparents are Lenora and Wendell Young Man Afraid of His Horses. She is from the Sitanka Na Tashunka Kokipapi, I hope I pronounced those right, Tioshpae, and she has three sisters and one brother and a partner of six years. She has a BA in Lakota studies with an emphasis in tribal law and is currently working on an MA in Lakota leadership and management as well as being a stay home mom, which is I think a full time job. <laughs> she has been uh, dancing women's fancy shawl since she was three years old and comes from a family of dancers. Her grandparents dance as well as her parents and dancing is a big part of her life. Uh, and she hopes she inspires others to dance and to try it out. So I will hand it over to you. Thank you Clementine. I uh, just want to thank Ra Racing Magpie for um, asking me to do this presentation. It was a big honor and I just really appreciate it. I love to dance and I just want to share uh, my interpretation of it. And basically what I was taught growing up from my, my mother and my grandmother and my father. So um, yeah, everything I'm going to share with you is just what I was taught in all the stories that was shared with me that I would like to share with you and just kind of give you an insight from a dancer's perspective and, and point of view. So yeah, my name is Santana Youngman, afraid of his horses. My Lakota name is Oglaka Chana Anahoktapi, which means when she speaks, they listen. And like Clementine said, I'm a student. Um, I go to school at Ogla Lakota College and I am working on my master's in Lakota leadership and management. And um, I, I'm a first time mother. I have a beautiful son and uh, he just turned one on the sixth. So it's exciting, baby walking all over and me chasing him. <laughs> and um, yeah, so let's get into it. Today, I'm gonna be showing a PowerPoint presentation. I love doing PowerPoints. It's just, it's always fun to show like pictures and then 
it's easier for me because I have like my bullet points that I could talk about with you guys. And um, I also have some regalia behind me that I'm gonna share with you and show, um, just show you what I have with me. All right. And yeah, like if you have any questions, don't be scared to ask, just ask away. And I'll try my best to um, answer them. And again, this is just um, what I was taught. Um, every, every tribe has a different story, a different way they were taught on how, how um, you know, powwows work and how you work with your, um, how you work on regalia, how regalia is made, you know, everything like that. Um, different versions of how dances were started. And this is just basically what I was taught and I'm gonna share that with you. So I'll start sharing my screen. All right. Can you guys see that good? Yeah. Okay. So I called this presentation Wachibi Life. So it's powwow, Wachibi, you know, to dance. And the Wachi is to dance from what I, my grandmother taught me. And then P is like the plural meaning. So, you know, like everybody, everybody dances. And, you know, Wachibi Life. And this is a picture of me by um, Thunderbird Eye Photography. It was done at Black Hills um, Wachipi whenever I was Miss Chesapawi. And I just, I really like this picture and I just wanted to show a little bit because it has like my regalia and everything in there. All right, so we're gonna start off. I just kind of want to touch base on the history and um, the beginnings of Powell's. So we, um, we really didn't have Powell's back in the day they didn't start until like the early, early 1900s and what i was taught um they really got commercialized at buffalo bills wild west show and basically you know that's where we would do our shows and um showcase our dancing and what we used to do back then was what my grandmother taught me was gatherings we would have celebrations and honorings you know in our own dances um they weren't called powwows you know it was just our relatives getting together and having our honorings and um we pretty much made powwows our own. We added our culture into it, our traditions, our dances, because, you know, in the beginning days, um, when the colonists came and all, all that stuff happened back then, we weren't allowed to practice our, our traditions. So this was our own way of making it our own, which I thought was really beautiful. And again, there's another picture. Uh, this picture is of me and my partner. It was done by Shania Richards Photography. Um, this was when I was um, pregnant, so we got a little photo done, but we wanted to do it in our regalia. So firstly, powwows are one of the best, best aspects of my life. They're one of the funnest um, things that I'm passionate about. One of my, my passions, basically. One of my passions is powwows. Like I always make time for them in my life. And secondly, they're beautiful. They're beautiful gatherings. You meet new people. You you get to meet a lot of people at powwows. Like when you go there, you have your powwow family. There's people you always see at every single powwow. You make new friends. You try new food. There's music, dancing. Um, a lot of honorings that are really beautiful. Some honorings, you know, they make you tear up because of how beautiful it is and how how great it feels to be surrounded by your culture. A lot of laughter. So if you ever go to a powwow. There's a lot of laughter going on. There's a lot of jokes, you know. Us Native Americans, we like we like to joke around, and we always believe laughter is good medicine for us. So you always hear a lot of laughter at powwows. And again, yeah, relatives and friends. You get to meet your relatives, your friends there, even relatives you haven't seen in a long time. You'll you can see them at powwows. And not only is there like the powwow aspect, the the dancing. There's also rodeos that go on, and there's horse rides. There's carnivals and there's sports like softball, volleyball, and um, I forgot to put that on there, but there's also like concerts, like music. So it's like, it's one big celebration and there's um, a place for everybody to go to. You know, if you're not a dancer, you could go ride horses, you can go to the carnivals, you know, there's there's a lot of options and fun events to go to at Powell's. So another, one little topic I want to touch on is um, like the agenda that we have at Pala. So Pala's usually last for three days. Sometimes there's four, like they have like that day Thursday, which is like a warm up day. 
and you can go and you know just relax there's no points taken it's just just a day to warm up and dance without worrying about you know contest and if you don't contest you know you just go and sometimes there's like four to five grand entries um and there's meals um what's one great thing about how is is they're always providing meals they feed you um you know breakfast and supper you know it's I think that's beautiful that we all take care of each other it just kind of shows how how we are as people we we love to take care of each other we love to feed each other and you know we're always looking out for each other and powers usually start in the evening on the first night you know there's grand entry you get there usually I'm rushing <laughs> I'm rushing to try to try to get get there and get my hair braided and, you know get ready for for grand entry then the second day they have two grand entries and you know and then third day they have which people try to usually end the powers early so if you're traveling, you can get back to work on the next day. And this is just a picture of me um, with my son. I don't know if you can see him, his, his little head's right there. And uh, uh, this photo was done by Maria Emery, which, who is my hunka son's mom. Or hunka son, my mom, my son's hunka mom. Sorry. <laughs> All right, and then, so I want to talk about categories. I'm just kind of touching base on the powwow, like a little bit, like here and there, and then we'll get into the dances. So we have categories, we have women's fancy shawl, jingle, and traditional. And um, this is just where I'm from. I know other tribes, they have more different um, styles that come into there, but I am not from them, so I can't really touch base on them, just from what I know. And um, there's old style and contemporary. You have more old style dancers and then more contemporary dancers. And then you have men's fancy, grass, chicken, and traditional. Again, they, they can be old style dancers or contemporary. And then um, the age groups there, it, it varies um, at certain powwows. There's tiny tots, juniors, teens, junior adults, senior adults, and golden age. The ages vary at every powwow, so I can't really give you the exact age group there that there is. And again, another photo. I'm trying to keep it as interesting as I can, so yeah. Alrighty, so now we're gonna get back in, or right, right into the, um, the dances. So I have women's traditional. Um, this is a really beautiful dance. You know, it's it's one of the, our original dances. Um, as you can see, um, these two young women, I have AJ Nobraid and Mercedes Young Men Afraid of Horses, both beautiful women. They're local dancers from my reservation. And um, they're wearing the original dance. And back then this is, um, one thing I was taught is the, the regalia is kind of a replica of what we used to wear, us women used to wear back then, you know, the buckskin dress and then the leggings. My mother and grandmother told me that the leggings were for, um, to protect our legs, you know, from like grass and like snakes and stuff like that. And then they have like the breastplate with the bones, you know, just to protect you. And then the belt with the knife case and, you know, the pouch and everything. So basically we had everything on us that we would use you know, just regularly back then. So, um, and then we have the beadwork that, you know, we would add on. And I think back then we had, a, um, we would decorate our, our dresses and everything. So um, as, as you can see on the slide I made, um, just kind of what they would wear. It's not a lot, not everything's on there because um, it kind of depends on the dancer and what they want to put on the regalia. Some wear like the, the feathers and some wear like the plumes, some wear headbands. It's basically you have free will what you want to put on your regalia, you know, you can make it as fancy as you want or as traditional as you want. And I, I like these two pictures because um, one's wearing a buckskin, the buckskin beaded dress and one's wearing a um, cloth dress. So there's those two different styles, you know, and they're just really beautiful. And um, I got this little um, part right here for my mother. It's, dignified respectful dance that was done to show support encouraging and honoring an individual or more so that basically when we would dance back then we were honoring or or supporting somebody and um if you notice like the women traditional when they dance um when there's honoring they like to stand on the sides and I grew, grew up watching you know my mom and when they was doing honoring they would go up and they would stand and they would dance for support or you know honoring so this is a really beautiful dance and um it's really hard to do. I can't. I can't really 
I could try it, but it's, it's a, it's a really tough dance. You have to have some really strong knees and, <laughs> and it, the way you have to be on tap to go, go up to next like that. So the dances, they have the straight and the side step. So every dance um, category, they have um, their own different dances that they do. They have, um, you know, a straight song, which is just a regular song. And then they have the side step. And this is what they would do. And if you ever look um, at traditional dancers when they do sidestep their feet, um, what I was told growing up is that you would barely move when you're dancing, but you're going to the beat, you know? And you always have to stay on rhythm when you're dancing. And that's kind of what um, you can look for when you're dancing is when they're going on beat. And what usually helps me when um, I'm focusing on dancing like traditional is, you know, if you ever hear a Powell song, there was the hard beats and you, what my mother taught me is you, you go up on the heartbeat. So yeah, that's what I was taught. And you can look at them and their elegance and their grace when they dance is beautiful. And I have Larissa no braid here. Um, you can see her beautiful beadwork and everything. Uh, one thing about that is um, all these dancers, you know, they, they make their own regalia. Like regalia is a big investment. If you're a dancer, it costs a lot of money and <laughs> it's a big investment, but you know, it's worth it. You have your beautiful, your beautiful stuff and people learn how to make your own. And it, it's really beautiful. So there you go. Oh, and style too. I want to talk about style. Every dancer has their own style. Like if you ever hear the MCs, um, Chris Eagle Hockey always tell you, you know, just dance your own style. If you ever look at dancers, we all have our own style of the way we dance and the way we carry ourselves and we just make our dances our own. So I think that's what's really beautiful about dancing. All right, so moving on to women's jingle. We have um, some pictures of Mercedes Young Man. This is my, actually, this is my little sister. You've seen her in the first slide. Uh, she used to be a traditional dancer. Now she's a um, jingle. She kind of goes back and forth between styles. So I have um, her here. And um, as you can see, she's wearing two different um, sets in her, these pictures. Um, she has her green one and her red one, which she, my mother helped her make that one over there, the green one. And then she started making the red bead work. So um, the version that I heard of the Jingle Dress was that it's a healing dance. And um, I've heard of the Ojibwe version of um, this um, elderly, you know, he, he, he had this dream of this, I don't know, because his um, granddaughter was sick. And he heard, he had a dream of how to make the dress, like a spirit told him how to make a dress and that it would be used for healing. And so he did it. He did everything that it told him to do. And at the powwow, he had her, you know, wear the dress. And every, I think it was every round, she went around the powwow grounds. Um, she started getting stronger and stronger. Um, that's just kind of the version I heard. So. I always know that this this dance is a healing dance. So when you're wearing that dress, you're out there, you have, to have good thoughts when you're dancing and um, good prayers. And uh, on Wachipis, you they'll have some times they'll have jingle dress dancers go out there and they'll have like a good healing song. And I think that's really, really beautiful. And I really adore jingle dress dancers. Um, if you look at the dresses, they have the jingles. I know um, some, some, um, people prefer a, a certain amount of jingles on their dresses and man, they're heavy, they're really heavy. <laughs> and they have the leggings, you know, the moccasins, sometimes fans, um, sometimes not, sometimes they hold a scarf in their hand. Um, that's the more like the old style, you know, they have the scarf and um, all of that. And then they have the hair ties, you know, they have chokers and headbands and they, there's a lot of different um, stuff that you can put on your regalia. And so for the dances, they also have a straight and a side step. This is John L. Brady and Laura No Braid. Um, I also want to thank AJ. She helped me a lot with some pictures and some information I was able to use. Uh, so they have the straight and the side step. Um, again, um, you have to kind of look at them when they stop on time, um, the way they move. If you ever watch Jingle Dress Dancers, when they move, they they, whatever move they do on one foot, they're gonna do on the other. And it's really beautiful. Like every time they're always doing one move on the other, you know, it's, it's so beautiful. And then they also raise their fan on, on the hard beat. And it's just a really beautiful dance. If you're watching, they're real poised, they hold themselves like real proud. It's, it's such a beautiful dance. All right, women's fancy shawl. So women's fancy shawl is our most contemporary dance of out of all the categories. 
um, what I was told growing up is that, you know, the dance represents a butterfly. And um, also my mother told me like, when you're dancing, you're out there, you're telling a story with your shawl, you know, just the way you're moving and the way your fringe is moving. It's like, it's telling a story. So when you're out there, make sure you're dancing with good thoughts and good prayers and, you know, no negativity. And that's one thing that um, Chris Eaglehawk used to say too, like when you're out there, just leave it all off, you know, go out there, just dance, leave all your, you know, all the troubles and everything off the dance floor, go out there and dance. That's one, one cool thing I remembered. And um, what I was told, like back then, you know, the men were dancing men's fancy and the women wanted to, you know, dance like them. And um, so they got their shawl and they started doing the footwork and everything and, and it turned into women's fancy shawl. So yeah, so for the regalia, you have, you know, a shawl, a dress, a cape, leggings, moccasins, and again, the hair ties, everything like that. Um, and it's a really, really, fun dance it's really physically tiring <laughs> okay so here's a picture let me go back real quick okay the picture i have is mimi sixaveth she is a, a dancer too that i you know grew up dancing with she's a really good dancer and she i want to thank her for letting me use her picture and then we have Soraya Kelly, Little Miss of All the Nation. Uh, I want to thank her to, and her, her mother for letting me use her picture too. This is her dancing and she's our Little Miss of All the Nation and she's just the most cutest, amazing little dancer. I, I always enjoy watching her dance. Like, she's such a good dancer. So you have um, a straight, a crow hop, a double beat, and a ruffle, and um, trick songs, I forgot to put them. But you, you'll have a lot of different varieties of fancy shawl because how contemporary they are. Um, and these dances are all really, really fun. Uh, uh, one little story, um, I didn't learn double beat until like, I think I was in teen categories. Um, I remember when I first heard it, I was at, where was I? I think a veteran's power here on the res, but um, I remember hearing it and I was like so confused. I was like, what is this? Cause I didn't dance for a while. Um, I lost my grandmother, so I wasn't dancing, but I remember hearing it and I was like, what, what is this? <laughs> I was so confused. <laughs> All right, so what to look for, you know, again, stopping on time, on beat, footwork, fancy shawl, there's a lot of footwork, you know, a lot of spinning, a lot of, just a lot of, you know, contemporariness and then or their style, you know, there's people like certain dancer styles and they, they all gravitate that, gravitate toward that. So yeah, like Surya, I love her style. She's a, a good style. And now, um, now we're gonna move on to the men's category. Um, I, I've learned as much as I can on the men's category, you know, growing up watching Bawa's. Um, this is just my interpretation of what I was taught. So this is also our oldest category. It's a warrior dance. Um, they used to, you know, they dance. And this was our oldest dance that we've had with the men. And they have like the bustle, the side drop, dance shirt, vest, apron, angoras, moccasins, bells, head roach, or the peshaw. Um, they have a lot of stuff that that comes with their regalia. And for their dances, you know, they have a straight, a sneak up, a double B, a crow hop, and a duck and dive. My favorite is the duck and dive. <laughs> but um, men's traditional is always, it's such a powerful dance. Whenever you see all the men out there dancing, it's just, you have to stop and watch and listen to the Malakisha and everything. Um, all right. So men's grass, we have, um, oh, let me go. I Sorry, this is Ace No Braid. This is the husband of AJ No Braid. And uh, again, thank them for letting me use this picture. And as you can see, he has real traditional, like the serious, the colors that we, we would normally use. They're so pretty. And then we have um, Byron Barrow. Thank you for letting me use your picture. So for the grass dance, um, what I was taught growing up, like our, they would um, dance the grass down for where our, um, we would set up, you know, camp. So they would go and they would dance it down. And that's just kind of what, what I was taught. And at Powa, sometimes um, they'll have grass dancers come in and dance the grounds down, which I think is really beautiful. And uh, for them, their regalia, they have the ribbon, the fringe, you know, ribbon or fringe um, depends on the dancer and the harness, moccasins, head roach, pashaw, belt, bells, side drops, cuffs, and a lot more stuff that goes to it um my father was a grass dancer so I grew up um, watching him dance and I miss watching him dance I wish I had like the technology we do back then so I was able to share with you how he used to dance and everything but Brian Barrow is one of my other favorite dancers 
So the dances they do is, you know, straight, a curl hop, and a double beat. Grass dancers are really, really good good ones to watch too. Like uh, I'm saying this about every category, but every category is good. I love watching everybody dance. <laughs> so what to look for that for for them is also rhythm, stuff on time, and their style. So basically every category you it's basically all the same with what you're gonna look for, like you know, rhythm, stopping on time, style. Then we have Man's Fancy Bustle. Uh, this is my Ape, Wendell Young Man of Radius Horses. And um, this is the most contemporary dance in the men's category. Um, I remember at the Black Hills um, Wachipi, they were talking about how they used to wear one bustle and they had like a special on that too and they didn't spin as much. And nowadays, I guess um, they said is what that's when they started. They started wearing two bustles, yeah. And I didn't know that until that pow wow. So I'm always learning, always learning at every function I go to. And what I was taught was it's a young men's warrior dance. So, you know, it's it's very physical dance. You know, you see people doing like um, cartwheels and back lifts and splits and, you know, it's a it's a good dance. And it's always the last um, category at the powers. <laughs> okay, so regalia, they have the two bustles, as you can see, the two bustles, they have the dance sticks and they have the cape and apron, angoras, side drop, uh, moccasins, head roach, cuffs, bells, and like, you know, a lot more with the headband and the scarf. And then their dances are straight, crow hop, ruffle, trick, and the, again, what to look for, stop on time, style, rhythm. And this is my, my um, partner right here, this is Carl Eagle. And um, again, you can see, you know, all the dancers moving in the background. So I kind of want to talk about the contest part too, because that's part of powwows, um, kind of just the breakdown. There's places and there's, um, yeah, there's places that every powwow kind of varies from like three places to four to five. It depends on the powwow. And the points, they can consist of grand entry points, contest points, there's exhibition points and spot checks. Um, spot checks is just when you're out there during intertribals dancing and they'll like randomly call and you have to be on the dance floor at the intertribal. So that's pretty, pretty cool. And then your regalia, some some powers, you know, I was you know, told, you know, when you go there, they have rules and you have to make sure you have everything on, you know, your everything, put your hair braided for a grand entry. And that's just um, just how some powers are, they have the rules. And then the dance contest, you contest um, maybe once or twice a day, it depends on the power. Um, and then the judges point of view, they would look for rhythm, footwork, style, stopping on time. So you'll have judges out there um, consisting like, however many judges they ask for and they'll watch you and you know sometimes there's ties and they'll have a tiebreaker and then the contest consists of about three days and then the winners are announced at the end of the power okay so um am i doing good on time Clementine? yeah yeah you're doing good okay all right i just want to make sure i'm doing good Alrighty, so i have a um a couple of videos i'm gonna share they're really very short um near the end um so this is uh, the videos that I can get their mind um, because I'm not sure how people are about like sharing their own videos or having someone share their video without getting permission first. <laughs> so I'm just gonna share my own. This is me and Carl, this is my boyfriend. Um, and we're at a, just a, a local powwow, Potato Creek, Wachipi. Well, it's one of my favorite powwows. It's always fun to go to. Um, and Basically, um, he's exhibitioning because they didn't have his category there. Some some powers will have like these specials and there's some categories that are sponsored and some that aren't. And his wasn't and um, he just wanted to dance. So they let him exhibition every time um, after we got done contesting. And I wanted to dance with him. And I like dancing to men's fancy songs. They're, they're really, really fun. And um, they're really challenging. Um, there's this dancer, um, Taylor Spoon Hunter. She told me like she practices to men's fancy and she's told me like, maybe I can do that too. Cause whenever, you know, I get that out in my category, it'll, it'll help me out a little. So I wanted to hop out there and it happened to be one of the songs that I'm always practicing too. So I was like super excited. So um, I'll play this for you guys.
It's antennas. They're supposed to be sound. Is it not playing? No, it couldn't hear the sound. Oh, shoot. Let me see. I wonder why not. Um, I think if you go back to reshare your screen, there's a option for like optimize sound. So maybe oh, so stop share. Yeah, and then reshare it. And it's like a little button you can click on the share screen, like in the bottom. Advanced sharing options? Yeah, I think. Oh, I think. I know. So people are um, saying it's still good without the sound. <laughs> 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 but the yeah the optimized sound should be like a little box at the bottom optimized of optimized for video clip yeah oh share sound i see okay thanks guys sorry <laughs> i'm already listening to it <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you <laughs> okay let's see there we go <laughs> Yeah, that was a, a really fun time for me right there. Me and me and Carl are just, you know, we're always competitive, so we're just like, let's dance. Mm -hmm. And um, the sound was off a little bit, but and it's super blurry. I'm sorry, but I, I don't know why my videos keep showing up blurry on here. So I'm just getting the best I can. And uh, my mother-in-law, Ava Good Curl, recorded this. So you could hear her screaming around. So that's one thing about college. You know, it's always super fun and just, just it's really fun just to get out there and do your thing and, you know not worry about anything. And then I also want to touch base a little bit on the veterans or Akichita, you know, um, cause they're also a big a part of, of our, our Wachipi. They lead in the grand entry and um, we do a lot of honorings for them. And as you can see, I took this picture at Porcupine Wachipi and there's a lot of our veterans and um, some of them aren't here today. So just wanted to share a picture of them. And then a little bit more, this is my Alte window. Um, they also have veteran specials. So I'm gonna show a little bit on that. They have veteran specials and they have all the veterans go out there and they dance and you know, it's something to do for, to honor them. So here we go. So a sneak up there, what they're doing right now is a sneak up. And if you can see the way their style is, you know, it's like they're sneaking up on somebody, you know, it's just, that's what I love about our dances. Cause they have like the stories in them. And if you ever listen to the songs, they're really beautiful. And um, in this one, you know, they're, they're sneaking up, you know, like on a, like an enemy or, you know, basically that's what it is. And I, I, I ain't trying to be biased, but I love the way my dad dances. It's always good to see him dancing. And then, uh, oh, so basically uh, the rest of the um, PowerPoint is photos. And I'm just gonna go through those really quick. This is Soraya Kelly, Little Miss Lola Nation. And I just wanted to share some photos of the dancers, some local dancers and of their regalia. So you can see that how everyone has their own different styles and um, colors and, you know, just everything 
is they make it their own, which is really beautiful. And this is Soraya, and she has a really beautiful shawl. It's an old style shawl, which I have always wanted. So maybe I should learn how to make myself one or make my sister make me one. <laughs> And then this is Mimi Suksaveth, you, if you've seen her picture um, before. And with her, I really want to thank her. She took the time to answer some questions for me, and I'll just um, read them off real quick. And she did a little introduce, introduction of herself. And she's Mini Kongju, Lakota, and Lao, and she's from Rapid City, South Dakota. And she loves traveling to different parts of the country, dancing with her family, and meeting new people and seeing friends. And this uh, picture she took was actually part of my special when I gave up my crown. I had a spotlight special and I had the funnest time with that. And she did really good. And I just love her regalia and her colors. And then she answered some questions that I thought like some people would be interested in hearing, you know, like when did she start dancing? She was five years old um, and I asked her why she danced. She said she fell in love with dancing and being in the circle. And also I asked her, is there any significance to her designs on her regalia? She said, yes, every design has a meaning and tells a story. And um, her tribe, she introduced that in the beginning. And describe your dance style. She's fancy, she's not old style, but she's not super contemporary either, which is another thing. Like some people like to, um, they're not completely old style, but they're not completely contemporary. You know, they make it their own. Mm -hmm. And then um, what rules were she, was she taught about dancing? And she said, keeping in time. Oh, she said, don't kick your legs too high. Um, what do you, what you do on one side, you do on the other. Spin and use your arms, be graceful, stop on time, be on beat. And then um, do you make your own regalia and who taught you? She said, yes, I make my own regalia and my mother taught me. And do you feel like regalia is an investment? She said, yes. And do you mind people taking your picture and using it? No, she does not mind. Some dancers don't mind and there's some that do. It's kind of um, a toss up. So that's why whenever I was doing this presentation, I wanted to make sure every person that was using you know, their picture that it was okay to use it. And um, do you believe you should be contacted and asked before using your picture? She said, I don't mind, so no. So I thought that was cool to have a dancer you know, answer questions like that. And this is my sister Mercedes um, Young Man. She dances women's jingle and traditional, and she also switch dances. So switch dances is um, sometimes we'll have specials and, you know, we'll just have fun with it. And the men will dance the women's categories and the women will dance the men's categories. So um, she loves to dance men's grass. Like she she really gets down with it. She can do the splits too. <laughs> and she's overall Lakota. She's been dancing since she was two years old. Um, she likes trying different categories. She'll even dance um, my category. So. Uh, I'm Women's Fancy, and um, one power, she just went back to back. She was dancing in the Women's Traditional, and then it was Jingle next, so she jumped in that one, and then she jumped in Women's Fancy, and then I only did one song, and it was done, but she she really went, and that just made me feel so proud of her, and then um, she likes to do hat and boot specials. We also have hat and boot specials. I'm not too um, uh, confident on what the hat and boot special is, so um, I don't want to give too much information, wrong information on that. And she has her Lakota Studies degree. And then these are some some pictures that, that she shared with me. And then this is AJ Nobraid. Um, she dances Northern cloth and buckskin. Um, she was a former drum coordinator for Denver March Powell, a head dancer. So a head dancer is a, a, a great honor. They ask like these um, dancers. Um, I haven't seen that too much around here recently, but it's been a while for Powell's. Um, but they ask a young woman, like a head woman dancer and head mid dancer, and they bring in the dancers. And it's always a good honor. Like that was one of, you know, my goals to get to when I got older. Um, and she's a seamstress. She's a beater. She's a veteran. And she's also a former royalty. So she was Miss Indian Nations, Miss White Buffalo Council Powell Princess, and she was runner up Miss Indian Colorado. And she is also a former fancy shawl and jingle dance dancer. So I liked how she was able to let me use these pictures too. They're really beautiful and um that she was royalty she did a lot a lot and that's what's awesome about powers it opens a lot of doors for opportunities and then here's her her husband ace Nobraid, former drum coordinator coordinator for denver march powell he's a powell singer arena director emc power coordinator head dancer another head dancer and a veteran so i think it's so cool like they um they do all these things together. It's, it's awesome when you see like couples who are just thriving together. And uh, I wanted to put a couple of pictures on there of them in there together, you know, carrying in the staffs and dancing. And 
I just think it's so beautiful when you see um, couples out there and, you know, just sharing their culture with each other. And uh, so royalty, I'll get touch base on that a little bit. So certain qualifications um, for royalty that every power has. So there's always a royalty princess for every single powwow that there is. And they represent that powwow and their people. So you, there's also, there's always like an age requirement. Um, you can't have children. And sometimes they'll have like a talent and like a speech that you give and then a dance and you have to be Native American. And then you hold that title for one year. And then when your year is up, you pass it on to the next young Wea that's running for the title. And this uh, royalty opens up a lot of opportunities for young women. You get to travel, you get to get asked to speak at functions and um, schools even. And it's, it's a really good experience. And here's another picture of AJ and Right. And then um, kind of rolling off royalty, I was Miss Uwalakota Nation, Miss Chesapomi, and Miss Uwalakota College. And I was also Miss Uwala District, but I can't find a picture of that one. And these are just pictures. One was, um, two of them were taken by my mother, and then one was taken by Tara Weston. Um, and being royalty, it's it's a really it's a really fun experience. It was it was scary because I was actually a really shy person back then. Like I couldn't imagine myself doing this, and I didn't get out of it until I got older. Um, yeah, until I got older. So powers was actually the reason that um, I and I'm at where I'm at because I was in a really bad spot. When I graduated high school, I really fell downhill and, you know, got off the wrong road, hung out with the wrong crowd. And um, I got out of that, though, you know, I got I got out of that um, and I started dancing and surrounding myself with culture and I signed up for classes and I was able to get out of um, all the bad stuff that I was doing and just push myself forward. And I'm always honest about that, you know, like where I came from, how I tried to, you know do you know that stuff <laughs> so power and culture is what really took me out of my bad place in my life and surrounding myself with my family and going to palace so I really really thankful for the royalty part because it opened up doors for me and opened my eyes made me want to do better so just a little bit for me she already read that off in the or she already introduced me in the beginning so I just wanted to share a little picture that my father took and this is me and my regalia. And then just a little video of me dancing. Um, this was my spotlight special. This was like my, my dream to always have a spotlight. And I finally was able to do it at my, um, when I gave up my crown for Miss Hesapoli. And one thing about that too is I was always saying Miss Hesapoli. <laughs> and my grandma was like, why are you saying hey, Hesapoli? She's like, doesn't that mean, or she's like, that means horn. Like, horn or yeah black horn woman she's like it's hey so when you're speaking I learned that I always have to make sure I pronounce the words right or else you know you're not saying the right thing so I always it's always a funny story to tell it's like well I was just saying that all the time <laughs> so yeah and um my best friend Shana took this video of me So um, yeah, that was a really fun spot spotlight special, and um, I finally, you know, my my goal came true. And if you can notice, there was um, some men standing around me. There was four of them, and they kind of made like a box. And that was kind of my father's idea. He had it stand up, so whenever the dancers came in, they couldn't um, pass that circle or that square they kind of made. And if you did that, you were disqualified. So I thought that was pretty cool. And they were all veterans. My ate, he's a veteran, and he wanted to do that kind of um, little thing there. 
So I thought that was a really, really interesting thing that he did. And okay, so here's just some fun photos to share. You know, just that power is show, showing everybody have a good time. It's my my ate and my boyfriend and their friend Carlos all dancing men's fancy. And um, the outfit my dad's um wearing was actually my boyfriend's first outfit that he made. He learned how to make a bustle. He didn't start dancing until 2017, 2018. He was it was a little late in the game, but he always wanted to dance, so he learned how to make his bustles. And then Carlos, he's always been really friendly and like there for Carl in the beginning when he started dancing, which is always good when there's other dancers who come and give you tips and help you on, you know, stuff like that. And then me and my sister at Well Nation. And then here's us again, um, just some fun photos. And this photo over here with um, Carl and my son it was taken by Jerry Matthews. And then another powwow, there's um, Kea Quinamar, Miss Denver March, and then um, Lavera Bad Wound. If you can see her on the corner, she was Miss Local Lakota Nation in, at that time. And then there's me. And then another fun photo of uh, my sister. I thought that one was really pretty, so I, I had to share it. And then there's me and my sisters. Um, we were just in a jingle dress special, just having fun. And then me and my best friend, Delcy Mochifigo, um, we, I let her borrow my outfit and my sister's beadwork so that she can dance. I always like to encourage people to dance. And then uh, there's my ate again, we're at Lame Deer Watch TV. And then there's me getting crowned by Elaine Redshirt. She was passing down her crown. And then another one over here, I ran for Miss Indian World and we were just having fun, like fun photo shoot outside. And then uh, here's the No Braid family over here. Um, again for sharing their photos and then us um, at our first powwow, um, my boyfriend and my son have matching outfits <laughs> that um, my mom made she 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 like sold this up quick like a day <laughs> and then over here this is a present and from Ms. Jesapolis there's like in the, or the order that it went um, right there and then another fun photo on that side you know they're just watching the powwow and that's the end of the presentation Okay, do I have time to share some regalia? Something? Yeah, yeah, there's definitely, and there's some, um, I just oh, want to yeah, share yeah. some yeah. comments. Yeah. yeah, um, folks are just, you know, giving you affirmation about the different aspects. Your mom is reminding you that you were also Miss Eagle Ness and Miss Porcupine. Um, uh, Mercedes shared that she also learned some woodland tribes over here don't have bustles, which is interesting. I know there's like straight dancers right from the Great Lakes area. Um, Mercedes also shared she cried watching you dance as Miss Black Hills. Very beautiful. Um, Cassandra asks, are there any suggestions for women who are interested in dancing but are unsure how to get started? Um. Yeah, I would say um, just you can ask any woman that, you know, if you want to dance, what you should do. Um, like if you were asking me, I would say just get up, start dancing, get up, turn on a power video. Like for me, I always like to watch on YouTube, whatever style you want to do. I always I'll sit there and I'll watch them all day. Like that's my thing. I'll sit and watch powwows and learn new moves and I'll practice every night. Just get up and dance. You know, who cares if it feels weird? No one's watching you. Just start dancing and um just ask people how to make a shawl and a dress and everybody's always willing to, that people I know, they're willing to share their knowledge on how to make stuff and they give good advice and everything. And um, I say, just just do it, just hop right into it. Don't be scared, <laughs> get up and start dancing. And um, you can message me if you wanna learn how to make regalia, I'll show you what skills I have, or, you know, my mother, she's watching, thank you mom. <laughs> and my sister, they're watching. <laughs> So yeah, just, I say, just get up and do it and, and don't be scared to do it. There's no wrong, or, no wrong way of jumping and dancing. But, yeah, was that, that was, that's good. And then just more affirmations from Facebook. So oh, okay, if you cool. want to share some regalia, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So basically, so I want to share these little compas first. Oh, you guys can see them. My mother made these, they're baby moccasins. These are my son's humpus. They're so pretty. And they have the geometrical designs on them. Uh, my mother made these. These are actually his um, second pair. He outgrew his, his first ones. And I just wanted to show these little ones. Um, he's always wearing them, so they're kind of dirty. 
but I really like the colors. So we actually might go with these kind of colors for his first regalia. They're so cute. <laughs> Thank you. All right, hold on, I have to get my stuff out. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna share just um, my regalia and my boyfriend's regalia. That's what I got here. Um, this was, I had um, my other regalia is at my mom's, but um, this is the cape I used a while ago. And this one I would say is my more traditional colors that I've used, uh, more serious colors I would say they're, they're called. And my mother and my father, they, they're the ones who designed this for me. They have the horse tracks. And some of these are the family designs that my dad was telling me about. Um, and just kind of my dad's design that he used to have. So I was really honored that they were letting me use these and wanted to design this for me. And in the front, it's painted in the front. So, <laughs> and it's a harness, it's really long. Well and everybody has like their own kind of style of capes that they do. So mine, mine goes really long. <laughs> it's really long and it just kind of ties. And uh, it's all beaded just in the back. And I beaded it. My mother um, taught me how to bead at a young age. She taught all of us how to bead. She actually made all of our regalia. And I'm like, how'd you do that? You have five kids, you made all of us regalia. <laughs> I could barely make my own, <laughs> but I learned how to make this and I really appreciate her for um, her and my dad for helping me design this. And it came with uh, some leggings. So I have the zipper on it, so it's kind of like, and it's basically the same design that's on the cape, but on the um, legging. And um, it's half white, half black. Both of them are. So if I feel like black on the outside of my legging, I can, or the white, you know, just kind of gives me options. And then here's my compass. Um, they're really used. <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> I went through a lot of souls <laughs> and, you know, cause you're outside, you're dancing and it's, it's a lot of used stuff. And um, my mother made these for me. And I, I really thankful for her. She always, She's always there making us regalia and helping us when we need it. And she does an amazing job on help us. And she made my hair ties. Um, someone asked what the yellow stripes stand for on your cape. So this right here, I started dancing when I was three years old. Uh, cool. <laughs> Yeah, your mom said that's what the three stripes are for. They're chatting. They're chatting in the Facebook. Oh, yeah, yeah there, my but, mom's here, you guys. <laughs> yeah, but I thought you could share for those that are yeah. on um, Facebook. <laughs> oh, okay. And then my mother made these. My mother, she's like, um, I'm trying to get on this level right here. So, <laughs> you know how intricate the designs are and just everything like that. It's. I'm really thankful. I, I love these hair ties. Um, I retired this outfit because you know I want to be able to keep it as long as I can, and I've been using it a lot. If you can tell it's been, it's pretty used. <laughs> it's like kind of dirty, but I'm trying to maintain it as well as I can because I don't want to. And why I, I wanted to give it up. <laughs> All right. So for my next outfit, I um, an old friend helped me design it, and um, it's more contemporary. So basically, old style, you know, it's more um, serious colors is how I would describe it. More traditional colors and contemporary um, is more like the brighter colors and the more um, extravagant stuff, more stuff added. And um, for me, I wanted to try out to do more contemporary, um, contemporary style that I want to try out. And it's been it's been really fun. <laughs> so I made um, myself this cape right here, and um, it's butterflies. And I try to keep it geometric as much as I can. And we just added some fun designs in it, you know, the strawberries and all of that. And um, I made this myself. And my friend, um, my old friend, um, he designed 
designed it for me and helped me pick out the colors. I know for sure I wanted orange. So we did the, the orange. And here's the front with the rose. And uh, I don't even know how he came up with this design. He's, he's really creative, like really creative. He just comes to him. <laughs> And I'm just like, okay, good. Cause I'm not really creative. Like if you give me something, I'll, I'll beat it. <laughs> but I can't really, I'm not, I can't come up with the designs, but if you, if you, you know, hand it to me, I can do it. And I just um, beaded this on Pellin and then put it on canvas. And then you put the bias tape on the edges. So, you know, you don't see it. And then the canvas covers the thread. So you're not rubbing on it. So it doesn't come undone. And this took me a long time to make, like a long time. <laughs> And then you have the leggings, which are basically the same thing, same design. Oh, funny, fun fact about this is it was supposed to have some lines that came down right here, <laughs> but I don't know why I didn't see it. <laughs> so like, I'm not gonna undo that whole thing and <laughs> redo it. And then here is the leggings. And um, I, I'm hoping this still fits me because I had a baby, so <laughs> I don't know if it still fits. <laughs> Here's the other legging. Um, again, it's just the same day in design, but it's on the opposite mirror of the other side. And as you can see, there's a little name right here. It says Mosby. <laughs> it was my dog's name. He passed away, so I just kind of wanted to put a little memory of him. Um, we're real animal people, me and my family. So like when we have our pets, they like mean a lot to us. <laughs> I was just I, I wanted to put a little something of there in him and just in general of him. And then um, my hair ties, they're not done. I tried to finish everything as quick as I can so I could wear my regalia at New Year's Powell before COVID hit. So I tried to make these. My boyfriend designed these for me. They came out really nice. I stopped to edge them and put on the backing. And too much to do. <laughs> and then these are my first pair of pompas that I've made myself. And um, my mom actually helped put on the sole. I, I hate putting on the soles, which is this part right here. And it's really tough to do because, you know, you have to put the sinew through the holes and the leather. And it's just, you have to be really strong. And my mom has some strong hands. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to. Okay. Um, as you can see, I have the morning star on there. My dad's side, he's actually um, from the Shire. Cheyenne tribe. So that's why I wanted to put that part of my family into my beadwork a little bit. Oh. And then um, I got, um, I asked, actually, I asked, ah, can't tell. I asked a couple people if they can um, uh, make me regalia because I'm still learning how to sew my own dresses and everything and which for me is the hardest thing is to do the arms <laughs> so I'm trying to get a hang of that so um, Jeanette Eaglehawk is one who made this skirt for me and she did such a great job on it she tried to match the beadwork and everything which I think she did a good job on and I'm really impressed with her work and she did the same thing on the um, shawl. She added the geometrical butterflies, the strawberries, like this is a lot of detail work that she added into there. Oh, there's a number on there. <laughs> One of my numbers for my contest. And then the fringe, you know. And it also depends like how every kind of fringe you want. You can have like the thicker, the thinner, just the regular old style fringe. Again, like I said, I'm going contemporary, so that's why my stuff is still like out there. And then I have this other shawl, which is a little bit more muted in colors, and it, it really stands out with the beadwork. Which I like, you know, like how it extends, how it pops together. But uh, Jamie Whiteface made this for me we traded. <laughs> so that's what's really cool, you know, we still trade things. Like I gave her one of my old shawls and she's made me this. So I really like it. It's more geometrical, more difficult at designs. And then this one, I just wanted to share too. Oh, let me do another one. 
that you've seen in the video. This is a show I was using in the video. Um, I actually bought this off a uh, champion dancer, Lauren Oaks, and I was just like, she was, she was selling it. I'm like, I need it because she's my favorite dancer. <laughs> and then um, I wanted to share a bustle. <laughs> so this is the men's fancy bustle. This, uh, my boyfriend made this. This is his third bustle he's made after, that he's made for himself. He's made like a couple, two orders and he taught himself and he's been learning his own techniques and on what works for him and how he can, you know, better his bustles. And I think he did a really good job on this one. This is for his new beadwork and he did um, thread work actually on it, which is pretty awesome. Took him a while, but <laughs> it came out really nice. And it has the hackles on top and the turkey spikes. And then he added the, the shiny tape on it. And then he made the board himself too. He bought like everything he made from scratch himself. You know, and you have, you have the the bar here that you tie it and you have to shape it around, around this. And you can put a design here too to cover that part. But he has two of these that he uses and then the flagging tape. So yeah, everything he 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 taught himself, which I'm really super impressed with, because he like I said he just started dancing, and um, I also learned how to make his his cape and apron and everything like that. And um, he made his arm bustles, which these go on the arms. And again, he he has to he he had to learn how to make everything stick and what worked for him on himself. So. I think this is really amazing thing that he learned. Okay. And then lastly, um, when I was talking about royalty, we um from Ms. Khesapoli, um, we don't have a traveling crown. So what a traveling crown is is um basically um you pass the crown on, you don't get to keep it. But for Miss um, Hisapawi, you get to keep the crown. So I was um, honored to be able to keep my crown as ash. And I like to share it when I like um, I get asked to speak at schools. I like to take it and show the young um, weas and the, you know that you know they can do it too because I would never thought I would <laughs> be Miss Hisapawi, especially the road I was going down when I was um you know uh, or like a young adult, 18, 19. I was going down a bad road and. I got myself out of it and started running for royalty and sharing my story and showing young girls that you can get out of that situation that you're in and you you don't need you know to go down that road and I was able to win Miss Chesapoli and I was so surprised and <laughs> I remember watching the video I was like standing there all shocked and shaking and like oh my god I won <laughs> so this is the the sash and the color of the blue, um, Hattie Dunham, she's the one who made this. She said it represents the different waters that all the tribes are from. That's why it has like, different shades. And then it has the buffaloes on the back. And she said I, I could have put my name there, but I was never never able to do that. So I always have this put up. Um, hopefully, I, where my boyfriend's trying to get me a big old frame to like, put it in so he can hang it up. It's really heavy though. So. <laughs> and then here's the crown. I like cried when they gave it to me. I'm like, <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> um, basically, when I had the crown, I was able to share the story of what is on the crown, which is the race, the racing magpie, <laughs> the, the magpie story. <laughs> and let's see if we can find her right there. So if you never heard about the story, I was able to tell the story you know, about the great race where the four-legged and the two-legged were racing against each other, you know, and the magpie, she's the one who won the race for the two-legged. So I don't know if you guys ever shared the, that story, but um, uh, do, do Ganje for, um, she, she's on the Powell Committee for Chai she gave me a book on the story. So I was able to like share that with students at school and then I would let them look at my crown and um, let them wear the crown if they wanted to. Cause I remember Miss Indian World, I forgot her name it was a long time ago. I was like a little girl, but she let me wear her crown and 
I was always like, I'm too shy to ever win a crown when I was little because I used to hide like literally behind my mom. She'll mom comment, <laughs> mom tell him. <laughs> I used to hide behind her legs like all the time. I would I did not like people looking at me. I'd be like, don't look at me. <laughs> and I would hide under tables when people would visit. Like I was so shy, even to dance. Like I was so scared to dance at all. And I didn't start dancing until I got like literally adult is when I first started to like really put myself out there dancing. So I just wanted to share the crown in the sash because I don't want it just to be put away and like just sitting somewhere. I want to be able to share it with everybody and young girls and everything. And Patty, she did a really beautiful job on it. So. It's so beautiful. I forgot your sash was fully beaded. Yeah, it is. It's so everything. amazing. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. She did a really beautiful job on it. And if you look at the other crowns too, they, she did a good job on those ones. And I remember when I was Miss Awala Nation, I was looking at um, Elena Redshirt. She was at a power and she had her crown on. It was so beautiful. And I was like, I'm going to win that crown. And I was like, I'm going to win a crown. I'm going to be Miss Khaisafoli. And then I ran for it. And there was six of us. And I was so scared because I was the oldest one there. <laughs> I was the oldest one there. I think it was like my last year to run. And um, what they told me is um, the reason I won is because of my honesty and, you know, just telling my story, like where I came from and what I pulled myself out of to be where I was. And they loved that part about me and, um, you know, my sobriety and everything like that. Like, it, um, I almost fell down that hole, that dark hole, but I got out of it. And um, that's what my mother told me. She's like, you did it at a young age. And most people, you know, don't get to say that. So um, I was like, yeah, I. I'm away from that and I'm happy that I got away from that like I, I didn't want to to be like that. I want to break the cycle for my son now I have a son <laughs> and just share my story with everybody and the young ladies around here and let them know like you you can do what you set your mind to and that's what all I want to promote <laughs> so I think that's all I, all I have oh my belt <laughs> Sorry. and I have my belt it actually has my my family on there, which is Tushinke Koki Papi, man afraid of his horses. And um, I got this made by um, what was his name? Richard Marshall. He came in to my work office and he was talking about his work, and I was like, I need a belt, and he's like, Well, I can make you one, and I was like, You make belts, and because I, I kind of just made my own little belts, you know, just to hold everything together. And then he made me this. I was like, oh, you made me this. <laughs> and he did a really good work just to match my beadwork and everything. And then he put my family's name on there. So again, regalia is it's a big investment. Like it, you have to really invest in it and really good take good care of it. So, yeah. I think that's all I have. Just thank you guys for having me. And if anybody has any questions or comments. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, your mom reminded you or is reminding folks that they have a youth group, uh, Wana Wahi, which will be teaching regalia making this spring and releasing videos and that you're one of the co-creators and mentors. Uh, Lane Youngman says they're proud of you. Wendell J said, I broke in those shawls. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, um, my dad. The switch dance is my dad. He always wins a women's switch dance. He, he can put on a show. <laughs> um, your mom is saying that uh, she's really proud of you, of your dedication and compassion for our Oyate. Um, and yeah, I just there's a lot of aff affirmations. Just um, you, you have beautiful beadwork, beautiful pieces in your regalia. Um, so I just thank you. And I really appreciate you sharing your story about sobriety and also coming to coming back to dancing later as an adult and, um, and finding like a path for a community through, through dancing. I really, really appreciate that. Yeah. That's what I love about our culture. It's so, it's so rich and everything. And, uh, it helped me become a better person. I just surrounded myself with it and, um, it keeps me strong. Um, the prayers, the everything, it just, it keeps me strong in what I believe in and keeps me on the right path, which, yeah. which is good, you know, because I have something to look forward to every year and powwows and hopefully powwows this year, I hope. Yeah, I <laughs> know. I just keep going down <laughs> so I can go. I, I really want my son to get into it too. And, 
in yeah. all of that. Yeah. I appreciate it. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking me. It was a good honor. I was like, oh, what? You want me to present? It on? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, again, I think um, it just, I've really admired, well, you and your family, I think I've learned a lot from your mom as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I, I love seeing you all out on the power trail and, mm -hmm. um, and just your, your presence um, in the community. So I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Um, and then again, thank you all for joining us through Facebook Live if you're here with us in the Zoom room. Um, and we look forward to sharing out. Um, please share Santana's video. We'll have it uploaded to our YouTube page through Racing Magpie. Um, and then we have a, about a month left of other winter camp presentations that we'll cover over um, until the spring equinox when we welcome back the thunder. So. Um, I'm really excited that we were able to share space today virtually. And yeah, thank you all for joining. Thank you.